Okay, up to this point, whenever we were looking at the re -fre frequency response of circuits with BJTs in them and MOSFETs, we had to add the capacitors in, and the capacitors created either low-pass or high-pass filters. But when you get up to high frequencies, then we have to worry about the built-in capacitance of devices. So let's start with the BJT. So here is our basic BJT. So it has an N region, a P region, and an N region for our NPN transistor. So every time we had a depletion region between an N and a P region, remember because of the diffusion, I get a buildup of positive and minus charges across this depletion. Well, whenever you get a buildup of charges across two parallel regions, that becomes a capacitor. So I have one capacitor right here between this junction and one capacitor right here in this junction. And then I also get some charge buildup between the electrical connection and this P region right here. So I get some charge right here. So if we take this and break it up into our small signal model, here's our R pi, here's our dependent current source, our RO, we have a capacitor right here between my collector and my base. So collector and my base. So this is that junction capacitor, which the book calls C mu. I also have some capacitance between my base and my emitter, which is this, going to be this base capacitance plus this junction capacitance. And they call that C pi because it goes in parallel with my R pi. And that's the combination of these two. So I'm going to add in this capacitor and this capacitor into my BJT small signal model. So now let's go look at our data sheet. So here is the 2N3904, and we're trying to figure out what these built in capacitors are. So if I come down here, and look at here is an output capacitance and here is an input capacitance. And these are called COBO and CIBO. So here I pulled these out right here and so here are our two built-in capacitors. So we have to Google what is COBO and CIBO because it's different terminology than the book. So if I Google that and look at that, oh, they explain how it all works. And here is some figures that show here is my input side, here is my output side. So we redrew those. So I copied those over here to look at my output and my input. So you see my input side is basically connected between my base and my emitter and my output side is connected between my base and my collector. Now we also we also want to look at what LT Spice does for this <coughs> these NPN transistors. So if I click here and do pick new transistor, I can scroll over and look at the parameters and you can see right here is a CJC so that is the junction capacitor connected to my collector. And then we also have a CJE, which is my junction capacitor connected to my emitter. So if we go back to here, that now this looks all of them together. So the CIBO is the same as the C junction connected to my emitter, which the book calls C pi, which is the capacitance between the base and the emitter. The COBO is the CJC, the junction capacitance connected to the collector, which the book calls C mu, and that is the capacitance between the collector and the base. So some other things are that when I take this PN junction like you had with a diode and I reverse bias or forward bias junctions, you can see that the buildup of the charges changes. So whenever the bias gets put on a transistor, the DC bias, that's going to change that capacitance. LT spice adjusts this capacitance a little bit. Whenever we're doing analysis design on paper, we're just going to use the fixed capacitance value. We're not going to, so our analysis is going to be off of the actual value a little bit because we're not taking into account the voltage uh, adjustment of the capacitance. 
Okay, so now let's go look at our MOSFET. So here is our basic MOSFET. Here is the gate. Here is the source and the drain. And then this is all built on some common substrate. So there's some capacitance between my gate and my substrate. There's also capacitance between my drain and my substrate and my source and my substrate. Instead of the substrate, they usually call this the body or the bulk. And then because of the PN regions, you're also going to get some capacitance between my gate region and my source. Similarly, over on this side, some gate region and my uh, drain. Okay, so we end up getting all these capacitors, and I copied this out of the book, and then I wrote in red what we're changing everything to. So in this class, we're basically just going to be tying my source to ground rather than having a whole bunch integrated onto the same substrate. So if I do this, you see this point becomes ground. I guess let's look down here. This point becomes ground, which means that this from the source to my body or the source to the bulk gets shorted out. And then this capacitor that goes from the drain to the bulk is going to be tied over to the source. So we're going to replace CDB with CDS because it's connected between the drain and the source through the substrate. Um, so here is our model of our MOSFET and we basically have three capacitors. Capacitor from gate to drain, capacitor from gate to source, and capacitor from drain to source. And then we basically come over here to our small signal model and add those three transistors on. And that is our small signal model that we're going to grab these from our data sheets or from LT Spice and be able to analyze them with these built in capacitors. And the built in capacitors are also called parasitic capacitances.